Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of This Is My Story, where we believe your story matters more than you know. I don't know what you have going on in your life today while you're listening, but trust me on this, your story matters, you matter, you have value in this world. And if you're wondering, hey, do I have a story? Yes, you do. Here at This Is My Story, we believe that the greatest thing about you, who you are, is Jesus Christ himself. And his story is that he came and gave himself on the cross for you, unconditional love, that you could be a light so that you could believe in a story that's so much bigger than anything this world has to offer. But sometimes it can be hard, right? It can be challenging to believe that. It can be difficult. You look around, you compare yourself to other people. Listen, our job, our passion here at this podcast and in our ministry is to help you snap out of that, to get out of that way of thinking and to think biblically, to think bigger, to think broader about who you are in Christ, to encourage you that your story matters more than you know. So today on this episode, I'm excited to introduce all of you to a really good friend of mine. His name is Mark Wright. He's the founder and president of Idols Aside Ministries. Guys, this is a phenomenal conversation because there's something very tragic and serious that happened in Paducah, Kentucky, right at the heart of where the tornado ripped through just a couple of months ago. And I hate that it's in the news one day for a week or so, then it's out of the news. But I'm telling you, Mark and Becky, their ministry and their work that's in Paducah and in Florida is to fatherless children and single mothers and grandmothers. This is a, a really difficult kind of outlier portion of the world that gets neglected, gets forgot about within the church and within other organizations. And Mark and Becky are the real deal, having the highest integrity, meeting these kinds of needs and bringing Jesus to people who quite often are left alone, isolated. And so I'm excited to introduce him to you. But before we dive in, I want to take a quick second to mention our sponsors for the show. We've been with Christian Healthcare Ministries for over 10 years, and we love it. If you're looking for alternative health care that is faith-based, affordable, and reliable, then this is it. Why pay more for health care when you can save with CHM? We've saved thousands of dollars with CHM during pregnancy and delivery, and it was simple. We submitted for reimbursement. That was it. All of our bills were covered. So I highly recommend that you check them out. Learn how to become a member today. Link will be in the description below and pinned to the comments. Secondly, our show sponsor, Word of Life, Wool.org. I love this ministry. It's a camp-based ministry all over the world. Also, it's a Bible college, a faith-based Bible college, the Word of Life Bible Institute. I encourage students, if you're graduating, go take a gap year. Go study the Bible for one semester, one year for your life. You will never, ever look back and regret that. You'll have a foundation of God's Word in your life forever. Parents, send your kids to camp, young age, high school, summer ministry, summer camp stuff, and, and winter camp stuff. We love it. In fact, I'll be heading up there later on this month anyway, to be up there with Word of Life in New York. So without further ado, I hope that you enjoy this conversation, but please do not listen without hitting subscribe, without hitting like, and send this podcast episode to someone else because together all of us can make a difference in Paducah, Kentucky, sowing seed, praying for those that have been infected by this tornado and praying for all those meeting the needs spiritually and physically up in that area. So God bless. Enjoy the conversation. Hey, brother. How you doing, man? Good, man. It looks cold there. It is pretty chilly. It's it's in the 40s, so it's uh, it's been a lot colder. <laughs> is it snowing there? No, it will be. Uh, it is gray, though. It's very gray. Yeah, it looks that way. So is your beard. Looking old there, my friend. <laughs> yep, that's what, uh, that's what uh, kids and uh, tornadoes do to you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, thanks for taking the time to jump on this podcast and talk about your story. Also talk about the tornado that you guys are giving all of your time and energy resources to and the people there in Paducah. Um, how are you doing? Like, how are you guys feeling right now? Yeah, man. Uh, you got Jesus Christ, brother. So he, uh, he, fills our, uh, he fills our tanks and our joy comes from the Lord, not of this world. Hey, man. So do you have any idea at this point how many people have lost their lives? Uh, the first... Uh, the first, when that storm came through, uh, my pastor and I got a call uh, to be at the candle factory. And um, I've never been to the candle factory in Mayfield. It's about 12 minutes from my house. And uh, we showed up there and they said there's a hundred and about 120 people that are trapped. And you hear voices and you hear people yelling and screaming and crying. And you can't get to them because there's thousands of pounds of steel and wood and rubble on top of them. And uh, so that night alone, I mean, we saw several bodies you know um that didn't make it uh that was that i've never been part of something like that um that was uh extremely emotional um you know it's still emotional thinking about it today 
Um, I, I don't know what the exact account is um, on, on how many lives were lost, you know, through this whole storm's path. I think I think it was over 100 for sure. If wow. you looked at the path of the storm, uh, you would think there would be thousands. And uh, I mean, it's crazy. I, I mean, I've heard story after story of a, everything from a, a child in a car seat being thrown 400 yards uh, that made it to uh, grandparents that were still in their bed and everything has gone in the house, but the, the bed in their master bedroom is still they were, that they were laying on is still there. And you just see so many God stories of just uh, God's hands of protection over so many families. Um, but there has been a lot of loss of life. But the numbers that I heard recently this week, there's about 11,000 homes uh, that were um, affected because of the tornado that were wiped out. That's across the entire state of Kentucky. So you're talking probably a close number of about 50,000 total people that were affected, that lost their home, lost their cars, you know, across across the state. Um, a very long path, about a 200-mile path. Well, for everybody listening, just to give you an idea, Mark and Becky, his wife, and Emily and I and our families, we've been getting together for probably the last 10 years and doing um, inner city ministry in Florida. And then last summer, we were up in Paducah, Kentucky, where we did a, a retreat with a group of fatherless girls, had a blast, unbelievable time. We took the boat out, taught the girls how to wakeboard, spent some awesome evenings doing worship together. Um, I was inspired by these girls, so many um, brave girls who've gone through some pretty tragic things, losing their fathers or having an absence um, of a father in their home. Uh, but while we were there, we had the RV, the boat, we were at a campground. And Mark, I'm just curious, I remember that campground, that area was on the lake there. I mean, how is that area? Have people been affected by the tornado in that particular part of uh, Paducah? The, the campground is there um, where uh, we, we put in the boat. Um, it's, it's called Moors. Moors is there. But everything to the left of Moors, you go literally about 250 yards left of Moors. And that whole area called Cambridge Shores, every single one of those houses is gone. So where where we got where we were on the boat dock and tied up the boat, that whole inlet there. Remember the house with the helicopter? Yeah. Uh, all those houses are completely gone. Uh, all those trees. Wow. Uh, for, you know the three different inlets that we saw. We would take the boat and go up and down each of those inlets. Every one of those trees, every one of those houses are completely gone. Every boat, every dock. So it doesn't even look, I mean, the terrain is different. Um, wow. So are, uh, did, did people lose their lives right there in that area? I think right there in Cambridge Shores, I think there's a, a loss of one life. The only hope is Jesus Christ. That is our hope. Uh, the, the world defines hope in a lot of different ways uh, uh, other than what scripture says. But, you know, our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it gives you a great opportunity with people that are uh, unbelievers or unchurched that do not understand or, or know the story of Jesus and, and, and why he died for us and why he gave us eternal life and, and, and has given us a purpose to live. So, you know, when you get the opportunity to introduce people to a creator, God, and introduce to them uh, brokenness and sin and where it started and what Jesus did on the cross and how he rose and uh, how he is, a uh, how Jesus today is interceding. Uh, he is our mediator between us and God, the father, and takes our prayers to the Father, and being able just to explain uh, the Jesus story, you know, to to somebody who has no idea, man, it's uh, it's 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 unbelievable, um, you know, and, and it's it's why, uh, just for example, the other day we were able to bless a mama with a car, and she lost her, she has uh, four kids and lost her three-year-old. Um, their house was taken away. She lost her three-year-old child in the storm. Oh my and, gosh, that's uh, so tragic. Lost man. her. Oh, tragic. I mean, just, I get teared up thinking about it. Can't imagine uh, just yeah. everything that's going on in her life. And, uh, but to be able to look at her and say, your child is in the arms of Jesus. You know, your three-year-old uh, is in a, a much better place, is in a safe place. And to be able to walk her through scripture and give her an understanding of where she knows and can be confident that her child is there, but that she can also be with her child, you know, yeah. and giving her an understanding of that. Yeah, man is a, um, it's a game changer, you know, because I don't know, um, you know, this mama's story and her other children, you know, um, you know, I know, um, the gospel of Jesus Christ is kind of new for them in a lot of ways. And, uh, yeah. so it's, a uh, God takes so many different situations and horrific situations and can, you know, show us good things through those, you know, and it's hard for somebody, um, uh, that, uh, that, that has hope and, 
things other than Christ. You know, it, it's a, it's a process to be able to show them, you know, hope in Jesus. And Mark, thanks for sharing that story. I, I hope everyone listening, we, we don't walk away from this conversation and, and hear the story of the girl uh, who lost her life and the mom who lost her three-year-old and, and grieve right now and grieve in the moment and just miss how we can get involved or miss how we can continue having this conversation at home and, and remember you guys and remember the brokenness that's going on there to lift you guys up in prayer, but to also to get involved and, and even have a conversation between the Lord and say, God, how can you take what happened in Paducah and the reality there and the story there um, to change my own heart, to have me be at a place where I'm more of aware of what's going on around me. And I think, you know, for everyone listening, that's the challenge is that we would sit with this for a little bit and allow that the story to kind of be immersive into our lives so that it can maybe put us at a place with the Lord where we say, Hey, God, this is, I want this to shake me to my core a little bit more so that here in Orlando or wherever you're listening, that when you go about your life and you go about your day, your job, your families, that all of us are keeping this story of Mark and Becky and Paducah and, and people in general who are going through some really tragic things personally or in their families, that we would ask God to give us a heart for that, a continued heart for that. Maybe it's that we would become more present in our thinking about Paducah, about people who are gone through something tragic. And, and that's good. I mean, that's the heartbeat of God. And I love that you guys are there, not only to provide um, physically for this mom and many other single mothers and, and children and grandmothers, but you're there to preach the gospel. You're there to bring hope. And that hope is Christ. I mean, are you hanging in there? How are you doing personally? Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. Um, he's, early on, God's given me a more clear path for where we're supposed to be right now, what's ahead. But for the first three weeks, there was like, thousands and thousands of different things you could do every day like and lord which home do i go to what street do i go to what single mother do i reach you know you know i mean it was just there's so many different directions so i called i called a friend of mine uh sissy sissy graham lynch her father is franklin graham and they have a, a ministry called samaritan's purse and they have a, a disaster relief program that goes all over the world so my, I know a question that my wife and I asked is, she's like, Sissy, where do we start? Like, how do you know where to go? And she just said, listen to the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you exactly, exactly where to go. And I'll tell you one of the most precious things in this season has been to have a lot of time with God every day, to have time in prayer and to have time in his word, um, because that's how we hear from God. You know, I'm able to hear his voice, able to hear him speak clearly on what I should be doing, you know, and man, it, I'm like, and I've always been very consistent and having time with God every day. Um, but man, when you, when you hit tragedy and you hit a, a hard place, man, you like, you, you're like, God, I need more of you. I need to hear more of you. I want to see more of you. I want you active more. And, and I tell you, man, I challenge challenge all believers no matter what storm you're going through in life whether it's uh, cancer or it's heart disease or it's a loss of a child loss of a spouse if it's you know you just lost you just lost a job um, you're in a financial crisis whatever your storm may be in life I just challenge you get into God's word and pray and you can't do too much of it because when you do that he shows you exactly what you're supposed to do he gives you the path to take and you know what he puts those people in front of you, those uh, that that you're supposed to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with. Mark, I love it, bro. I love your heart for Jesus, your dedication and commitment to preaching the gospel and not only meeting needs physically, but that spiritual element. And so, I'd like to transition maybe and just ask, like, how can we get involved? Like, for those listening, like, what is what is something that we could actually do um, to help you guys and to be a part of what God's doing in in Paducah? First, absolute thing is. Um, and I know you hear this a lot in ministry is pray, but, uh, but I'm asking y'all to really, everybody that's listening to pray and get in God's word and ask the Lord, what can I, you know, what can you do? You know, um, there's power in prayer, but I know some of you maybe may be listening can, God has blessed you in a lot of different ways with contacts, with finances and our lane for the last 14 years of my wife and I's life is, is 
our full-time ministry is ministering to fatherless youth, single mothers and grandmothers that are raising these kids without an active father, active man in the home. And uh, there's been over a thousand single mothers affected with the loss of a home and the loss of a car. You know, um, most of these homes that they've lost are homes that they've rented. It's government housing. Uh, they didn't have renter's insurance. So they are at, have, having to start over with every piece of furnishing, every pot and pan, every fork and spoon, having to start completely over with everything that they had. As far as cars, um, a lot of people didn't have gap insurance. A lot of people were upside down in their payments. A lot of people broke even. So uh, over the last couple of weeks, we've been able to be instrumental in being involved in blessing four single mothers with, with uh, gently used newer vehicles. And that's pretty cool to be able to help with that physical need like that. And uh, so there's needs. Um, you know, people will say, well, how much money do you need to raise? I don't have a dollar amount, but I know four cars cost about $100,000. You know, yeah. we were able to, and, uh, and, you know, there are so many, I have a list, a, a spreadsheet of single mothers and grandmothers that need uh, down payments for apartments and condos and housing. You know, so a down payment, you know, they usually ask for first, first and second month's rent. There's an easy $1,500 uh, for a very small place. Um, you know, housing, uh, we're working uh, right now to try to get housing in the ground, um, you know, and so, you know, the numbers are huge. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the numbers are big. Um, as far as bottled water, clothing, heaters, kerosene, fuel, generators, all those needs have been met. You know, we're doing good there, but now we're, you know, it's like we ran a sprint for a few weeks and now it's like, now we're dealing with a marathon. But anybody listening, if you could help, you know, if God's blessed you, um, financially uh, or he's blessed you with contacts where you may know a, a, a guy or, or a family that owns several car dealerships and they may say hey we can get two cars donated or god's blessed you um, you know um, with a successful business and you know you feel like if you want to send a gift to to idle the side ministries our lane it's going to go to a single mom or grandmother that's where it's going to go um but uh we appreciate y'all's prayers and just ask you to get on your hands and face before jesus I get emotional because I see the power of prayer and when people not only pray for the needs of these mamas and grandmothers being met, but we're seeing God like do miracles providing the way. Um, I'm at my church right now. We get, we get together at six o'clock every morning. Our church does. And uh, we, we've committed as a church in this season to do 21 days of prayer and fasting, you know, wow. and, and a lot wow. of it, a lot of this is included, you know, you know, you can't get these families off your mind every day. You know, you're doing you're doing life with them. You're trying to minister to them and help them and meet needs. And but most importantly, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's one thing I pray for every day is God, will you show yourself to these people, you know, that do not know you, that do not have a relationship with you? Will you show yourself? You know, and it's pretty cool when you can uh yesterday we were able to give a car to a mama yesterday, a sweet mama. And guess what? She doesn't attend a local body church. She's coming to church Sunday. You know, we were able yeah. to show, just, just reach out our hand and show love. And she's like, you know, these people really love me. They don't know me and they're trusting me and giving me a car. I don't deserve a car. She's like, nobody's ever done anything like this for me before. Yeah, Mark, would you take just a second and let listeners know where they can actually go online and, and give and how they could give financially? If you want to send a gift, you can do it on our website at idolsaside.com. You can do a one-time gift on there, or you can mail a check to the Idols Aside Ministries office. Uh, and that is Idols Aside Ministries. 222 Kentucky Avenue, Suite 7, Paducah, Kentucky, 42003. Just whatever whatever y'all want to do. We uh, we appreciate it. Appreciate you listening this morning. Just hearing our hearts. That's a blessing. Yeah. All right, man. Well, before we close, I'd love to just take a minute with you and ask you to share your story because I know God has taken your broken past of, of not having a, a father in your life and he's used um, Jesus and the gospel to not only redeem that and give you a heavenly father. And now he's even worked in your, your earthly father to restore that relationship. But he's also given you this heart and this passion and idols aside and, and full-time ministry to use that story to change broken lives right now. Yeah. I just a, a, try a quick snippet of my testimony. Um, I, I grew up, had a real young mother um, that had me at a young age and uh, married my blood father. Uh, they got divorced when I was five years old. Uh, so I was uh, my, um, so it was me and my mom for a few years till she married my stepdad. And so I saw season, you know, what it was like, you know, to be from a broken home, see divorce, 
uh, my blood father, who is my hero, is not around anymore. And uh, so that was tough as a child. But God blessed me with an amazing mom, amazing stepdad. And I do have a, a great relationship with my blood father today. Uh, God's done a, a, a lot of miracles there, which is awesome. And had the godly grandparents and uh, played about every sport that I could growing up as a kid. And I uh, had the opportunity to play college football at Appalachian State University. Uh, my sophomore year of college was when I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Uh, when I was a little kid, I said a prayer, went to church as a kid. But uh, my full surrender uh, was my sophomore year of college. Uh, first two years of college, I was living a worldly life, uh, drinking a lot of beer, chasing women, uh, being the typical college football player. And uh, God wrecked me and had three people that week uh, give me the word grace. And uh, had a note in my locker from Coach Jeremiah 29, 13, you shall seek me and find me when you give me all your heart. And just had some godly coaches and godly men that said, Mark, you know, um, there's more to this life. And uh, God's got a lot of greater things for you. And uh, I remember that Sunday at a little tiny country church. Uh, I was just kind of running that time of my life. I didn't want anybody to even see me in church. Uh, and I went to this little country church called Trinity, uh, Trinity Baptist in Deep Gap, North Carolina. And um, that was the day a guy named Pastor Wade Ivy, evangelist out of Texas, was speaking. And uh, he was speaking on grace. And I had buddies of mine try to put me in a discipleship, that, discipleship group that week talking about grace. Coach was talking about grace. And, man, that's when I went forward and just broke down for my Savior. And that day forward, man, my life was uh, it changed. Uh, everything that I looked at, everything I listened to, my actions, my words, uh, my demeanor, you know, um, my folks, I wanted to put Jesus in it. And, uh, you know, I was a different guy after that day and, um, not perfect, still center saved by grace, but man, that was, uh, that was my turning point. That was my, uh, um, that was my surrender, you know, and, uh, that's when I gave everything to Christ. And from there forward, uh, God blessed me with a beautiful, beautiful woman named Becky. I've been married to for about two, this year makes 20 years. Oh yeah, dude. You, you like me married way, way out of your league. I know we, uh, yeah. Yeah, I love your story. You got a pretty good story on that one too, buddy. But uh, I definitely married up. She is definitely Becky Wright is definitely the better half for sure. Um, but we got married at young. I was finishing up my last semester of college playing college football. So we got married when I was still in school. Man, it was an awesome season. Um, got the opportunity to go to an NFL Combine, a tryout. Uh, Lord uh, had different plans. Went in the corporate world for a little bit, and then. Um, back at the uh, end of 2008 is when we started Idols Aside. And uh, it's just awesome. People ask me all the time, you know, um, why are you doing what you're doing? And I just, I really believe I'm just going about my father's business. You know, I'm using my story um, of uh, growing up uh, at a season without a father figure um, and just utilizing what God's done in my life with my story, with my college football experience to, to just life and uh, the business world experience and just taking all those things and putting them together to go about my father's business. And uh, so, man, I'm blessed and I'm 41, be 42 this year. And man, if the Lord took me home today or took me home tomorrow, man, it's been an awesome ride, you know, and I just, I've been so blessed, man, to be, be able to witness a lot of harvest uh, in ministry and seeing broken, broken people uh, submit their life to Jesus Christ. And um, he's blessed me with two beautiful daughters, uh, 15 year old and 11 year old. And, man, I'm just, uh, I'm just overly blessed, brother. I love it, dude. Thanks for sharing your story, man. I really hope people will share this conversation. It's uh, been impactful for me. I think it'll be impactful for everyone that's listening to, to just awaken us to something big. You're doing a good thing, man. Love you I guys. I appreciate you guys. We love you. And it's a blessing to have you as a close friend and a brother in Christ. And awesome to be able to be in the battlefield with you, man, and try to bring as many people we can with us to heaven. You know, it's uh, your blessing, brother. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of This Is My Story. Man, I was moved by Mark's conversation and what God's doing there, and I hope you were too. Please be sure to share this episode. Share it on the YouTube channel. If you're listening, text the link to a friend. Be sure to hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, do so. I'll put a link down below in the description, and I'll pin it to the comments where you can actually donate money to Idols Aside Ministries, and I'll put the address of that Mark mentioned um, if you want to send a check. So... I want to thank you. Remember, your story matters more than you know.